HRN listeners. As we celebrate our 15th year, we are deepening our commitment to giving voice to the next generation of food system storytellers, and we need your help. Our internship and fellowship programs help activate new possibilities for underrepresented and underestimated young people through experiential journalism, audio engineering, and production training. Through these unique programs, HRN helps food equity stewards build essential workforce readiness skills that expand their potential and foster economic mobility. Please consider supporting these critical programs. And with a minimum donation, you can be entered to win a dinner for two at an amazing restaurant in one of eight cities and tickets to a concert at a great venue in one of those cities. We have incredible partners across the country who have donated as they also share our passion for helping to educate the next generation of food system storytellers. Check out heritageradionetwork.org 15 to donate and enter to win today. That's heritageradionetwork.org 15 to donate and enter to win today. And make sure you donate before March 31st. Thank you. This episode of The Grape Nation is brought to you by Vivino. Discover and buy wines wherever you are. Visit vivino.com backslash heritage to stock up. I'm HRN's Communication Director, Kat Johnson, with a preview of the next episode of Meat and 3, our weekly food news roundup. We're exploring the future of eating animals, and we're going beyond typical meat sources. If you look at the length of human history, we've been eating insects a lot longer than we haven't been in the United States and Western Europe. We're looking at unusual ways to purchase meat. People are like, really? Why would I want to buy that out of machine? And we introduce you to Frank Reese, a poultry farmer whose traditional farming methods are featured in a new documentary. I'm a fourth-generation farmer in Kansas, and I focus basically all on standard bread poultry and have my whole life. He's kind of the last one standing with these rarefied breeds that are so important for if we're going to eat chicken and turkey into the future. He's essential. He's a national treasure. Listen to Meat and 3 this week to better understand the history and the future of meat. Available on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. To the Grape Nation, your weekly wine journey. Our guests are Dr. Valerie Levin, Levine, yes, Levine, 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 Corinne Colm, and Valerie Villard from the Bordeaux region of France. We'll talk to Valerie, Corinne, and Valerie about women and white wine in Bordeaux. We've been tasting a bunch of their wines, and we'll discuss them later. I'm your host Sam Ben Ruby. Stay with us for the Grape Nation on the Heritage Radio Network. We bring wine to the people. Dr. Valerie Levine is a global consultant and one of the top experts in the vinification of aging and dry white wine. Corinne Coe is from Chateau Champ de Tre, a celebrated Bordeaux viticulturist, international consultant, and champion for biodynamic viticulture. And Valerie Villard is the first woman winemaker from the Pessac Leon. Leonion. Leonion. Leonion region, and has led Chateau Le Tour Martillac for more than 25 years. So that's who we're sitting with. Welcome to the Grape Nation, ladies. Thank you. Thank you for sitting with me, and we have a lot to talk about. Before we get into White Bordeaux and your passion and your involvement with it, I want to just go around the table quickly. And let's tell everyone who you are. Let's start with you, Corinne. Oh. <laughs> so I'm the owner of Chateau du Champ des Trey. I'm growing this estate. So I'm the wine grower and the winemaker. Okay. And uh, I, I took over this estate to 20 years ago. And at the same time, I, I and my husband, we were at a step in our life where we wonder if what we have learned at school, because we both are engineers, uh, 
were, was well adapted with, with the people we were, right. and it was not the case, so we had chosen to grow biodynamically and to answer to the question why things arise and to have a very global approach of the nature. Right. So you are the winemaker, and your husband, we should throw that in, is a, fair to say, a famous winemaker? Uh, and wine grower, maybe first wine okay. grower. He's okay, poor yeah. guy. Yeah. All right. Um, Valerie? Yes. I have... We can, I can say I have two different careers. Okay. I'm a wine researcher at the Institute of Vine and Wine in Bordeaux. Okay. And in the same time, I'm also a wine and wine consultant in Bordeaux, of course, but also in Europe. For other wineries? Yes, okay. of course. And I started this uh, 25 years ago, a little bit more, with Denis du Bourdieu. So you're busy. Yeah, you I am. I am. Lot. All right, and Valerie? So um, I am the winemaker. I'm enologist. I did uh, my study at the University of Enology in Bordeaux. And uh, uh, in 1989, so most of um, 25 years ago. Right. And uh, I am the, <laughs> so the enologist, the winemaker of the Chateau La Tour Martillac. I am not the owner. <laughs> but um, I, I have a, the owner. I have a big ch- challenge to to do and to, to the, the, the best wine with the, the best fruit that the the the, um, the vineyard the vineyard gives to me. Right. So Valerie, you make wine. Corinne, you make wine. And Dr. Valerie, you consult. Yeah. For a lot we can of wine. say so that. Yes. You all have your hands in a lot of your own and different people's wines. All right, so the U.S. market is a top market for white Bordeaux blends. We know that from the numbers and the statistics. The problem is, and I think it's a problem because I'm involved in the wine world, is I don't think enough people know about white Bordeaux and have tasted them you know, after doing a tasting today and what I know about it, it's a little sad. But I want to ask you guys, why do you think that's the case? Why isn't white Bordeaux more popular or more people drinking it? I mean, is there anything we could do? What's your feelings on that? I think probably the first thing we have to say is that that for most of people, Bordeaux is red. And so most, there's a perception. Yes. yes. Most okay. of people doesn't know that uh, we produced white wine in Bordeaux. It's only more or less 10% of the uh, area plantation. And uh, what is very interesting, and we need to make people discover that all over the world, is that in Bordeaux, we are able to produce very different kind of wine, type right. of wine. Okay. So uh, this is also maybe the reason why it's more difficult to for people to have an idea of what a white wine for Bordeaux is exactly because there are not one wine well, sorry one wine wine <laughs> one wine white Bordeaux but different kind of so right. it's more difficult I think so Valerie you at at La Tour Martiac you make red and white wine, yes. but the majority of what you make is red, I, I which is what Dr. Valerie alluded to, the perception is. Yes. Uh, but you're here. Uh, in Natu I, I make, um, I hope I make a great wine, a great wine, um, uh, a, a wine uh, which to which can be kept, we age, can be aged in, in right. bottle. Uh, you know, we, we age our wine, our white wine, uh, during 15 months in the cellar before the bottling, so we we do the same uh, process, like not like the same process. Uh, we age really the white wine in barrels and on the on the lees. Um, it's a it's a well made wine. And, and it's we a have wine made for aging. Yes, and we have the, the different type of soils, so different 
grapes, Sauvignon and Semillon on different type of soils. So we, I want to. We, we'll get to that. Yeah. You know. Okay. I you know I want you guys to help me with the geography and the terroir. Um, Corinne, do you make predominantly white wines? No, red. You make both. Yes. Right. I, but the majority is red. So why do you feel now is the time to? get out there and promote the whites, they should get the due they deserve? Yes, because I think also that Bordeaux has an old-fashioned picture in the mind of the people. And, like uh, a silly male-driven industry or something? Yes, and um, it's, it's uh, we, we have to, to, to go back to notoriety because in the past Bordeaux whites were, were sold um, at ex more expensive price than the reds right and I don't know why things was changed. that just the sweet wines or everything no everything everything, everything. everything. okay and uh, but you know also in the world there there are trends and uh, as the world is totally open, we have to follow the trends. Too. Right, right, which I agree. All right, so let's let's talk about the wines. I want people to get a picture of the region, the geography. I want people to understand um, where these grapes are grown, the type of soil, and then I want to talk about the type of grapes and their characteristics. So. Dr. Valerie, if if people want to sort of imagine where most white wines are grown, they're grown in Bordeaux, south. Because Bordeaux is a big region with a lot yes. of famous areas: Polac, Saint Emilion, Medoc. Where is the predominant region for? Between Bordeaux and uh, Barsac. Okay. On the, on the left bank, uh, yes, okay. on the left, on the left bank, bank okay. and on the right bank, between Blaye, Saint Emilion, and uh, what we can say, maybe uh, Saint Foy la Grande, but nobody knows where is Saint Foy la Grande, yeah. so <laughs> it's difficult. But maybe we can consider it's uh, the, the right uh, bank is uh, between Blaye and uh, Saint Emilion. Okay. Maybe. Yes. yes, I think so, it's okay. Valerie, your La Tour Martillac is on the on, on the left bank. Left bank, and Corinne, you are on in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> no, but is it the, the right, left right bank or middle of nowhere bank? bank. No, right, Which yeah. one is it? The um, right bank. In yes. Case. The right yes. bank. Mm -hmm. Okay. So your left bank wine, your right bank wine. Yes. Yes. So it just shows you. Yes. You know, yes. The diversity. Yes, but that. um, we can make but, one yeah. white yes. wine or uh, the, the boss boss. Yeah. Uh, uh, and the right and the left bank. Yes. Right. So that's geography, so people can imagine mm -hmm. that. It's a fairly wide cut. Let's talk about terroir. Are the soils so different and diverse yeah. by yeah. region? Yes. yes. So let's get specific. We have three different examples. So the type of soils, Valerie, that you're growing your wines in are what? We have two type, soil, type okay. of soils. We have uh, limestone. And clay okay. and gravels. Those are and, that makes up most of where the grapes are grown. And we grow uh, Semillon and Sauvignon of these the two types of soils. Right. And we the, the aromas are, are different if the Sauvignon is planted on on limestone or cl on clay or on gravel. So it's the grapes are grown on any of those. Yes, but uh, uh, it's uh, you, predominantly you limestone. Or not necessarily. So, yes, you need okay. limestone and clay. Yes. So, Dr. Valerie, this is where you can give us the answer because you consult, obviously, different wineries in different regions. Yes, of with course. different terroirs and soil. Um, anything besides limestone, gravel, um, clay. It, it's it's uh, all these type of soil are very uh, good uh, soil. To the go, white for grapes. the white grapes, but it's very connected with the climate. If you have a cool climate or a very rainy climate, the, the, the soil which be more successful. Some are better, like 
will not What's be the same. Soil and yeah. rain? In, when it rains, the better soil is gravel. Because it drains. Because better. it drains. Okay. Me- so it but depends on the the soil, the terroir, obviously the weather, and then obviously exactly, farming techniques exactly. separately and all. So, and Bordeaux is um, Atlantic Atlantic climate, so we have quite a lot of water, our rainfall. So we need to to plant uh, vine on soil with quite limited uh, water soil reserve. Right. Okay. And Corinne, your your soil makeup for your wines? Uh, we are mostly limestone and clay and okay. flint. And what was the last one? Flint. 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 Yeah. Okay. Um, and those characters, characteristics, carry through into the wine, right? Yes. You can pick up the limestone and the Sauvignon. You could pick up flint, I would guess, right? Yeah. Depending on all of that. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's talk about. So that's that's what it's growing in. And, and Dr. Valerie made a good point. The soil is one thing, but certainly the weather can dictate yes, the sure. outcome from vintage to vintage. To vintage. Um, let's talk about the grapes. There's basically three grapes that make yeah. up white Bordeaux in the Bordeaux region. Yeah. So ironically, <laughs> we have three people here. So the homework assignment is everyone gets a grape. So we're going to go around the table and let's talk about the characteristics of each grape and what each grape does to the wine. So as a group, I want you to just answer this. What do you feel is the predominant, most widely used or important grape in the blend? Is there an answer or not? Is it Sauvignon Blanc or is it? It can be Sauvignon. Okay, so there's no answer. All right. It's no secret that I like being that person who always has some great wine on hand. When I know I've got a few bottles hanging around the kitchen, I feel like I'm ready for anything. If anything, is just because I never know when friends will drop by unannounced or because it's even just a Monday. I also hate that last minute run to the store. Wine was never meant to be bought in a hurry. It's funny how we have so much patience growing the grapes, aging the wine, only to feel pressured when you're staring at the shelf. I use Vivino to scan and keep track of my favorites. But lately, I've been stocking up through their web store. They have the best prices and largest online wine inventory, but can also give you personalized recommendations based on bottles you've liked in the past. And I use their premium service for unlimited free shipping. That's an extra bottle's worth of savings on every order. Plus, they have a 30-day free trial. I just grab a few at a time and save them from when the right moment rolls around. You never know when that'll be. Visit vivino.com backslash grape nation to stock up. Valerie, let's, your wines when you blend are predominantly Sauvignon or? No, much more Sauvignon. Okay, so... Talk to me about Sauvignon Blanc. Tell me a little about the grape and its Yes, character. but uh, we, we blend both. No, I okay. know. Yes, We're yes. going to talk about, and, yes. I want to, let's take each grape individually and then we'll talk about blending. What is it about Sauvignon Blanc? It has characteristics. Yes. It has a certain nose and all that. Tell me about the grape. It's a very fruity variety, aromas. Uh, Citrusy? S- yes. Okay. Um, grapefruit. Um, grapefruit. Uh, citrus, citrus, all the citrus, right. and uh, you can have some flavors of uh, white peach, um, of uh, 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 black currant. Just uh, how about on yes, the nose? Yes, yes. The what nose. are typical um, descriptors on the nose? Uh, it's very fresh, very fresh. fruity, like a, like a fresh juice. It's sometimes. very distinct, though. I mean, it has the nose, when you smell it, you know it's Sauvignon. Exotic fruit, yes. you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, very uh, recognizable. Very, very recognizable, yes, that's yes, my yes. point. All right, Dr. Valerie, what about Sémillon? A Sémillon is a um, very interesting it's interesting grape variety. As you probably know, we, there, are, there are not a lot of Sémillon in the world. Okay. We have some in Australia and 
a lot of in, in Bordeaux. Um, in the past, we had more Semillon that, than we had today. People but pulled it up. Yes, yes, because the out. selection was not very well done, and uh, and uh, it died, and the, we the, the people are more interested in aromas. But Semillon is very interesting. Um, because sometimes we can, you can confuse with uh, Chardonnay, for example, because we have some very interesting uh, hazelnut notes and uh, toasted and very, and it's very well supported by the freshness of Sauvignon. Right. And in the mouth, we, we have something larger and sweet, more sweet than Sauvignon. Right. Okay. So that's Sauvignon. Uh, Corinne, you're left with the most fun of the three and the one used yep. the least, which is Muscadel. Yes. Tell me about the... Do you use Muscadel in your yes. wine? Yes. Tell me about some of the qualities and characteristics of that. Yes. Game. So, when I'm making the wine, first of all, I want a verticality. And the verticality is done both with the semillon that gives the depth and with the muscadel that gives the finish. And the, the muscadel on, is a very difficult variety to grow, uh, quite crazy, late, and so on. Is that part of the reason that yes. you don't see a lot of it? Yes, in the blend? because it, it's, it's a very challenging To put it variety. politely, it's a pain in the ass to grow? Um, I'm difficult too, so I'm very friendly with the muscadel. You don't get along, okay. (laughs) Oh, you relate to it. Yes, yes. But, you know, they they live their own life. They they don't grow as the the other. Right. They don't need the same thing. But when you understand them, it's much easier. Right. And uh, I love them because it's very delicate, very fine, very subtle. So give me some descriptors. What, what does it add as far as taste in the nose? Um, during the vinification, the smell is like old roses, you know? Okay. With a kind of paper inside, and also the juice is, is, is pink. Right. And um, it gives peaches, aromas, uh, teas, um, herbs, and something very fine, very... Sounds a little uh, exotic yeah. or different. No, like, something like muscat. Yes. Is it like muscat? Yeah. All right, so those are the grapes. So now you're working with three grapes, and now it's about blending. Mm-hmm. It's about what the vintage dealt you, you know, how big a crop, how good of a crop. Um, when you picked sweetness, bricks, and all of that stuff. So let's talk about... And Valerie, certainly you can address this because you do it. When you blend, yes. What what is the process in your mind when you're blending? Um, first of all, we we taste all the different lots of wine of wine coming from different plot of the vine. Right. So we we harvest, uh, we we check the maturity of the fruit, and then we decide to pick up the fruit, and we vinificate. Uh, separately, each plot of vines. Uh, then the, we, the, the wine is fermenting in barrels in La Tomartiac, and we we use only 25 oak, not to have too oaky smell into the into the wine. So we and use 25 percent oak. Yeah. The new. rest of it is in new new new, new, new oak, oak. New oak. Sorry. The new oak. Yeah. Or all, all the white wine okay. ferment in barrels right. with uh, new oak with 25 percent new oak. We, we have different, for, during the blending, we have different wines coming from Sauvignon and Semillon, and we, we, we taste the different wines, and we decide the blend of the first wine, which, which will be aged a long time in bottle, and the second wine, which will be more fruity, and a, a wine you can drink more quickly. Got it. Um, Dr. Valerie, you consult for a lot of people, so people have different... Project, aesthetical projects. Well, so they, yeah, they have different tastes, yes, ideas, sure. they have different sure. vineyards, so, so everyone is a new canvas for you. Of course. So, so I guess the first thing you have to do is listen. 
First, right. exactly. As wine consultant, we, we made the same processing that uh, Valeria d- just described. We taste uh, all the lots, all produced on the different plots of the, in the vineyard, vineyard sorry, Sauvignon and Semillon, sometimes Muscadel. And then um, I'm, I'm not choosing the, the wine I prefer by myself, but I'm listening to the to the owner, and it depends on the wine he, he loves and he would like to, he, he, he wants to do. So, so it's so, their wine, not your wine. I, of course. Do you have to bite your lips sometimes and go, "That's yes, not the, you, sure, but sure, it's, sure." It's I have to. Paying you, so. Yes, I have to. To I have to to not to say exactly what I, w- I prefer because it's not my job. Right. But but I have to. To, to guide, the, right. to, to help the, the, the owner to find the right way to, to reach the goal he, he wants to, 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 to reach, the wine he wants to do. Okay. Is, is somebody so wrong every now and then yes, that sometimes. you just have to say, listen, <laughs> I know you know what you want, but this isn't going to end the way it's supposed to. Sometimes I have, I have to say that's not the right way. You have to, these, these slots... If you put it in your blend, your wine won't have, for example, the, the, the good ability for aging right. or something like that. Right. That makes sense. Corinne, you're, there's two things. The question about the wines that you make, and I want you to address the fact that you grow your wines biodynamically, yeah. which is harder. No. It's not harder? No. It's, it's different. It, it's different. Fair yeah. and better. Uh, it's the way we right, live. So let's, yeah. let's tell people what biodynamic farming is in a grape vineyard. Yes. So if, first of all, of course, we have to be organic. Right. But so it means no, no chemicals, no I don't know how to say it in English, and no weed killer. Pesticides, yeah, chemicals. But right. we, we are allowed for, for certain. Right. But um, the difference between organic point of view and biodynamic one is that maybe you being organic, you have the same way of thinking as with chemicals. You are fighting against a disease. With a biodyma- biodynamic point of view, you wonder why the disease arises. Right. And you want to have in mind, you have to have in mind always the balance. And uh, So it's more proactive than reactive. Yes. You don't wait a, for the bug to come and then try no, to kill no, them. No. You figure out why there are mice yes, or bugs. Yes, who they are or, and what the, it means concerning right. the, the problem of either the weather or, or the terroir. Right. But because very often it's a problem in the terroir that asks the, the, the disease to come. Right. So we give to the terroir what, in fact, the, the, the disease gives without problem for the crop, of course. Right. And also during the winter, we give care to the terroir to get this balance because we are working with four elements. And, and it's, these four elements um, are useful for everything. To describe the terroir, for, to describe the variety, to describe the plants, the animals, the, pe- the body, <laughs> the wines also. And we want a good balance with the earth element that is linked with the limestone. Right. And that gives the depth in the wine. The water element that is linked with the clay and gives the freshness. Right. The, the hair element that is linked with the sand and gives the finesse and the fire elements that is the link with the fruits and the, the gravels of stone and that give the alcohol and the aromas. Right. Um, a lot to keep an eye on, a lot to manage. When you look at white Bordeaux, there are different styles, drynesses and all of that, right? And I'm not talking about the sweet wine. No, no. I'm talking about... Mm-hmm. Dry. Um, do all of you strive to make a balanced dry wine? I mean, you, you, your wines are... What style? How would you describe it? Um, a complex wine. 
complex. Uh, a lot of flavors. But it's, uh, it's, it's categorized as a dry white. Yes, yes. Uh, because in the U.S., there's a lot of so, so interest most, towards sweeter residual sugar yeah, whites. They're no, very no, popular. So, so That's most, not what's so, going on so here. Most That's important, what I was to the most important is the taste of the wine. And the, 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 you have to, 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 to guess that this wine comes from, from great fruit, fruity fruit, um, um, so um, it, it, it has to, 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 to give you a, an emotion when you taste this wine. Um, I, I, it's difficult to explain, um, but... Um, it's okay. Uh, yes. It's okay. So the, the differences in styles, are they that varied? I mean, I think there's a difference in blending, right? The vintage year creates a difference. The blending creates a difference. Yes. But I think it's fair for us to say that white Bordeaux are generally a white dry wine driven by the two, three grapes. Why we just use three f grapes? Yeah. The, because the um, when the the, the LC yeah, well, was the yes yes the, the, the LC was built like that and the the soil and the climate. Is uh, right. very well for these three grape varieties. And they were, yes. That's what was planted in yeah, 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 the area yeah, yeah. and all of that. Um, we talked about this a little before, but the wines are aged and the aging has a different characteristic, adds a different characteristic. Uh, Valerie, you age your wines in barrels. In barrels. On lees, on the total lees. Right. And Dr. Valerie, you have clients that do not use yes wood. some of them used right. some of them some not and the the wine they are producing are of course very very different right. also Corinne is making Corinne wine Europe. without wood, Only, wood yes no wood at all no wood at all yeah. so do you use stainless steel concrete I mean the both you do both yeah. okay um, and why why do you stay away from wood I did it in the past but to me, the result was not uh, what I had in mind when I produced white, because um, the oaky part was too strong, right. and it's maybe because I have so much muscadel, right. and it's so delicate. That has so, something to do with yes, it. Yes, so um, I enjoy growing grapes, and if for months I don't have um, the fruity part, it's difficult for me. Right. Some some grape variety are more more adapted, adapted to the to the wood. For me, semillon right. is much more um, in, in 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 wood than sauvignon or muscadel. Muscadel yeah. because the, the in the mouth it's quite diluted and not it's difficult to to stand that the, the wood and sauvignon the, the aromas are so sensitive to oxidation right. that in wood. It's uh, it's the fruit is decreasing, more or less. So so uh, the the new wood we use it for the semillon in Bordeaux, huh? yes. right. and the, the mm -hmm. old wood we use it for the sauvignon. For the, sauvignon. And Valerie, to keep the wood you use basically every year. You use twenty five percent new oak. So I keep I keep old barrels for right. for vinificate right. the the sauvignon. So it's a it's a similar thing. Yes. All right. We're going to wrap up in a few minutes, but I wanted to ask you a couple other things. Um, I think white Bordeaux is a delicious wine. I think the three grapes, you know, it has that that uh, complexity. It has that mouthfeel. It has uh, the acidity. It's a terrific food wine. So I, I wouldn't be happy if I didn't ask you guys, <laughs> I guess personally and overall, Let's talk about some good wines, good food, and wine pairings that go. Is there a classic food and wine pairing for white Bordeaux? Because if, yeah. if you said oysters, well, no, 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 nine no. out of no. ten people would say <laughs> champagne. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Tell me, let's go around the table. Tell me some good food pairings. Um, scallops. Scallops? Yeah. So we're in uh, seafood, shellfish. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Valerie? 
uh, grilled uh, seafood, grilled, um, grilled fish, seafood. fish. Now, delicate white fish and oily fish, it could handle both? Uh, white fish. More of a white fish? Yes, maybe. Okay. And uh, also chicken. Yes. Chicken. Roasted, yes. roasted yeah. chicken. Not so yeah. much white. like a duck. A little, no, a little no, 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 no
rate the shows you like, tell your friends, and please join our community by becoming a member. Just click on the beating heart at the top right of our homepage. Thanks for listening.